Welcome to Surf Fishing 101. Fishing with live eels, it's probably the most productive way of catching big fish in the surf. Over the years, it has proven that the guys that use live and rigged eels generally outfish everyone with lures when it comes to the size of the fish. Um, a lot of guys are intimidated by using live eels and rigged eels, obviously. Um, but live eels in particular because, well, they're live and they look like little snakes uh, running around, so they're not that easy to handle. Um, we put together two videos, almost half an hour in length. One of portion that you might have seen already is Bill Wetzel talking about how to fish a live eel, and then following is Bill's explanation of where to fish live eels. So what we have here is, uh, I mean, I use 50-pound test braid. Can you bump it up to 65 pound test? Sometimes I use 65 when I'm fishing just strictly for trophy fish. But really when you're eeling, it's, uh, I mean, a lot of times you're just going for a trophy anyway because eels are a gateway to big fish. So um, my, I'm, I'm really simple. It's a 50 pound test Power Pro here, a polymer knot to a 90 pound test barrel swivel. So I prefer the Mustad uh, 94-150s as opposed to the octopus hooks. Uh, most of the guys use the octopus hooks. I like the Mustad. I use 8.0. It's a larger hook. It's a beefier hook. But the main reason is because of the barb. Because the barb is bigger. So when you're when you're casting when you're casting that eel, the the the, the eel will tend to stay on the Mustad more than the octopus. I found because of the barb. It stays on that barb. It can't get off the barb. The octopus, you know. I take out people all the time. I take out new guys. I take out experienced guys. You know, I'm doing a lot of charters all year long. And what happens is with the octopus hooks, guys come back and it just falls off and you lose a lot of eels. Not so with the mustad hook. So that's, that's the main reason I use the mustad hook. Um, you know, people talk about, also with the hook, people talk about sharpening the hook. You know, oh, the octopus is much sharper, they say. Well, that's not necessarily true. You go to Home Depot, buy a file, sharpen your hook. It takes two seconds. It'll be sharp as the Mustad. I mean, sharp as the Gamagatsu. When you're scraping it, this one definitely catches the nail. So one of the reasons why this is sharper, I think, because it's just a thinner hook. So sharpen. I never had any problems socking this through a 40. You know, people, oh, you bigger fish. It's never going to sock through their mouth. That's crap. You know, I mean, these, these, these hooks will go right through a 40, trust me. Um, so, so I got my 80 pound test. I'm just gonna tie the 80 Mustad via improved clinch. That's all I use, man, it works. You don't have to snell it, you don't have to do any of that. If you, if you want, if that's your thing, you can do that. Just an improved clinch with the 80, what it. And that's it. I mean, this is the same setup I would use to throw a plug, a daughter or anything else. Same exact thing. So only now I got it. I, I'm set up for eels. Um, the rod, the rod I use, I use, um, you know, I'm fishing like bigger surf. So it depends on where you're fishing. If you're fishing the back bays, you, you might not want to use this setup. But, you know, I'm fishing main, mainly the south shore of Long Island and a lot of Montauk. 90% of my fishing is in Montauk. So what I have, I have is a, a VS275 with 50 pound test Power Pro up to 65 sometimes. Um, and the rod I use is the, is the Lama Glass GSB 1321M. It's a great blank, it's, 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 it's soft enough so when, you, when, when, you're, when you're feeding the, the bass, the eel, he's not feeling it so much as opposed to like a stiffer rod. Um, and you can get out any size eel with this blank. So it's, it's a great all around blank, it's what I use. It's really a basic setup. I have a live eel well. I mean, you can store your eels at home too. I got a 55 gallon uh, aquarium at home where I store my eels. Around the 55 gallon aquarium, I have black all over it. Uh, I don't know what it is, like bl black construction paper all around it. I tape it to, to the uh, tank. That keeps the eels nice and dark. Now, most people believe that, you know, you, you need, you know, the darker eel, the better. The blacker the eel, the better. Eh, I don't find that necessarily true. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna, if you, if, if he's sitting in your white cooler and he's almost white, green, I find that the bass like him either way. It's a, it's a freaking swimming eel swimming around in the ocean. This bass sees it, he's gonna hit it. I mean, either way. 
Um, a lot of guys would disagree with me on that, but that's my experience. So um, what I use for my truck, I have a live well on my truck. And so this is power bubbles. You can get this in most bait and tackle shots like Bass Pro or whatever. And this is basically attached positive, negative. That's it, man. And then I, uh, I screw it into this and, it, and it's locked down solid. This goes constantly, truck on, truck off. You're good for days as long as your battery's okay. You don't have to start your truck or anything like that. It's only like an amp. So then you got you got the tube coming out. It goes in. It goes into my uh, cooler. And these are the live eels. I have a little aerator here. And when you pick out your live eels, you should go to a, get friendly with your bait and tackle shop owner. Most guys will let you pick out the eels. You want them. Like anywhere from like, I don't know, 14 inches to like 20 inches, depending on where you're fishing. The back bays, I like them a little smaller. You open surf, I like them bigger because you want that extra weight to cast them. So, um, now what, what do you use to take them out in the surf? Well, there's two ways of doing it, really. You can take an eel. You want to grab an eel. Say you're fishing from a... Uh, Say you're fishing from the beach, um, just like a sandy beach like we're on, we're on right now. This is the lazy man, way, man uh, of, of doing the eel. I mean, you don't have to carry him out to the surf or anything like that because you're fishing out of your truck, right? So you just take an eel. Just take an eel. Put some sand on his head. See, he's going around. It's kind of silly, but get some sand in his eyes. See that sand in his eyes? Now he's going to mellow out. So now you can just grab him. And then to get him on the hook, you just go through the lower jaw and out the eye socket. And now I, I just take the sand, get the sand off his eyes. He's ready to be hooked now. See, I got, I'm grabbing him no problem with the sand. That's, that's the easy way of doing it on the sand. But you know, you, when you're out on the rocks, usually for me, I'm out on the rocks. I'm not gonna do it that way. So we're gonna do it the other way, where, where, where I'm carrying it in the bag. I see a lot of guys that have these buckets on the side of their, you know, they carry these freaking big buckets and they, they get the Brillo pad and shit you read about is, it's, oh, you're gonna, you're, you're telling me you're gonna be on a rock with a bucket on the side of you taking a Brillo pad with waves crashing into you, dunking into the bucket now with a Brillo pad. No way, no way. I would not recommend that at all. And they'll say, well, you know, the bag kills them. That's why. It's not true. A small bag will kill your eels. A big bag will not kill your eels. You want a bag about this size where the eels can lay. If you have a little friggin' bag like this, the eels have nowhere to lay and they're all curled up and they're gonna die on you pretty much, you know, quick. And I, I, if, it's, if it's like an August night or something like that, they'll die on you quicker. Or if they're getting hit by waves, you know, they'll obviously die on you quicker. But when they're get, but the thing is, you, you attach them to your belt and it's behind. It's behind you, not in front of you. If it's in front of you, the wave's gonna get, it's gonna get hit by waves. And, and it's, gonna, it's gonna damage the eel and they're gonna die quicker. So. You know, it's really all just technique of keeping your eels alive. So what you, I'm going to do is I'm just going to put two eels in here. I got a bunch of them. Uh, whatever, I'll put a couple in there. So, right. Now they're in my bag. Let's just say I'm going out on the rocks, where I'm, wherever I'm going. Now they're attached to my belt. I like this little thing here too. Get an eel bag, like EMS carries some nice bags. They're basically laundry bags, but you know, get, get a better one. Um, I like this little thing too, because when you, when you get it, when, when you open up the bag, um, you can adjust this so the eels won't come out. I mean, if the bag's open like this, it's a little bit harder and the eels can, can escape while you're trying to grab one eel. So while you're walking, while you're walking with the bag, 
Say you're walking a mile into somewhere. You don't want to, you don't want to carry it like this. You want to carry the bag like this with the rod on your shoulder so the eels aren't flapping around against, against your uh, leg and damaging your eels. So you want to carry them outside like that, right? So, all right, so when you're walking with them or when you get to your rock, what you want to do after you put the eel on is just put it in your belt. I like to put them behind my belt so if the wave hits them, it's going to damage them. Sometimes I forget to do that. I put them in front and, you know, they get damaged a little quicker. So then you want to take it off. The first thing you want to do, say, say I'm on a rock or on a sandy beach, really. You want to get your, you want to get your hook ready for the eel. So I'm going to take this off the roller. I'm going to give myself some slack like that, right? Now I got the slack, so now I can grab, I can grab the hook without a problem. I'm, I'm not screwing around with the hook, trying to get the. It's easy. And by the way, people will say, "Oh, you got to slap the eel. You got to do all this crazy shit." You don't have to do that. You want the point of having a live eel is to have a live eel, right? And I heard other people say, "Well, I don't like them around the rocks because they dive into the rocks and then they lose the eel." To me, that's like, like, what are you talking about? That's what an eel's supposed to do. That's why they're great around the rocks, because they're diving into the rocks where the bass are. If you're fishing rocks with an eel, all you do to keep them kind of out of the rocks is reel a little bit faster, just like a plug, just like a bucktail. You reel a little faster to keep them out of the rocks. They, they won't go into the rocks. If you know how to fish it, they won't go into the rocks. But you want them close to the rocks. You want them kind of going in there where, where the bass are. So here's how you do it. Take your bag. So you notice I got my holes this big. It's not, it's not way out here. It's this big, just big enough to kind of get my hands in there. And you want to curl it up. Curl it up. And find an eel. Grab them. See, I'm grabbing them on the outside with the bag. These are really live eels. So they're local eels. The local eels are the best, man. Sometimes they get the eels from Maine. But if you can get in a tackle shop where they have local eels, they're better. So you want to grab the eel. Find the eel. Sometimes it's harder when they're uh, feisty. You want to make sure the other eels are on the bottom. Then you want to grab right on the side of them. Right on the side of their gills. And grab freaking tight. See all the other eels are down here? I got this guy right here. He's grabbed tight. So now I got my hook ready and everything. So now it's through the lower jaw, right there, and out the eye socket. And then you just kind of, that's it. Now you want to cast him right away. If you have to walk to the beach, if you're walking, keep his tail on the ground. If you do that, he's not going to curl up. Now you're going to cast it pretty much like a plug. You're going to get your contact right away, and you want to keep your rod up here, not down here. Because when you get that hit, you want to drop your rod. So your rod's up here, and you're reeling really, really slow, just like reeling a plug. Now here's the thing. If you think you have a hit, it's not a hit. When you get a hit, you're going to know it. It's going to be boom. It's going to feel just like that, like somebody slapped your rod with their fist. So when you get that, you're going to do one or two things. You're going to either bow down to the eel immediately and when you do it it's got to be immediate it can't be like this oh i got a hit it can't be like that it's let me let me cast them out again i'll show you it can't so when you get that hit when he really hammers it it's immediate it's and you extend. See how I'm extending? It's not like this. You gotta take your left arm, your hands down here, and you're extending all the way. And then the, the key when you do that is you gotta stay down. You stay down until you feel his weight. When you feel his weight, you rod it, you feel his weight, you uh, 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 uh. And then when you hit him, I can't do it with the seal in the water, but when you hit him, you're down, you're bound down, you hit him, boom! You know, you, you really want to drive that hook in his mouth. And sometimes they're on right away. Obviously, 
don't drop your, if he's on, don't drop your rod, because then you're not waiting. If he's on right away, you're just gonna set the hook. I had one customer one time, we're on a trophy trip, and uh, in the rocks in Montauk, I set my drag really, really tight when eeling. Because it's just a single hook, you wanna get the fish out of the rocks, so I have it really tight. So he had a hit, fish on, I hear drag peeling out, and he's like this, waiting. He's like, when do I set the hook? I'm like, set it, man. He missed that fish. Oh, that was a good fish. I'll never forget it. So that's it. You know, when it's on, if he's on right away, you're setting the hook right away. If you feel that hit, he's not on. I mean, you got to make a split second decision. And remember, it's, it's immediate drop. It's, and you extend, and now you stay down until you feel his weight. When you feel his weight, that's when you hit him. A lot of guys will cast the eel. A lot of guys cast wrong in the first place. When you cast, your, your, your plug or your eel should definitely not go on like, be going like this and looping around and going back. If you do that with a plug, a lot of times I've seen rods break, but with the eel, it's gonna come back, it's gonna, it, it's gonna if there's, when you're coming back and there's slack in your back cast, on the forward cast, it's gonna pick up that slack and the eel's gonna probably fly off. So it's gotta be a smooth. If you're a guy like me, I mean, I start my cast from here and I come back, but it's a smooth transition, you know? It's a smooth transition with the eel. There's no, there's no slack when I come back and go forward. So what I would recommend most people do is just come back here, stop. Make sure your eel or your plug is stopped, square out, and then go forward and you won't have a problem. Because if you're one of these guys that do this, the eel's gonna pop off. But you're gonna cast it. I mean, put power into the cast. Don't feel like, uh, don't feel because you're casting this big eel. If your rod can't handle it, then get a new rod. I mean, if you got like a two and a half ounce eel uh, up on there and your rod can't handle a two and a half ounce reel, uh, eel, then you should be using a different rod. But you know, I mean, put power into it. I mean, watch, I'll put a little power into this cast. I mean, you can really, you know, get it out there. Your, your goal is to get it out there in the surf. You know, you don't want it mansy pansy around and just and expect to catch anything. Although some fish, sometimes the fish are right in front of you. Say, I'm, say now I'm done with the eel, right? So you can put it, in, it back in your live well and he will stay potentially for weeks, right? So, but I'm gonna let this one go. <laughs> um, so people ask me where to fish live eels, you know, uh, when to fish live eels. Really the time to fish live eels is any time during the year. Uh, you know, when, the, when they first start in April or May, all the way to December is a good time. Um, but the prime times for me are when the fish are like uh, and when the water temperature is a little bit warmer and there's not those bigger baits like there's not herring around bunker around you know those bigger juvie weak fish you know baits like that you know the bigger baits the bass are really aggressive on those baits and they're keying up on those baits and you know you really don't even have to throw an eel because you're throwing darters or whatever to imitate that bait and you know those plugs will work better than the eels a lot of times um, I love, my favorite time to throw them is like on, uh, during the summer um, when, the fit, when the water temperatures are like in, in the low 70s. Um, the fish are a little bit more lethargic at that time and I do some really big fish in, in Montauk at that time of year. Um, it's a lot of work to catch those big fish but the eels will help you out to catch them. Um, you know, they, they see that eel coming through the water at that time of year and they'll just pounce on it. Um, so really, the best time is any time. Personally, I prefer when the water temperature is a little bit warmer and the baits are different. So really, that period from June to October, really. I'm still throwing eels right now. I mean, it's November right now, I'm still throwing eels. So, but primarily in the back bays. Right now, up front, you know, there's a lot of bunker around, there's bigger baits, I'm hoping for the herring soon. So, up front I'm throwing the bigger plugs and in the back I'm still throwing eels. Um, what was the other thing? Well, yeah, I think you covered the structure and 
What was the other thing? I, I say open beach anywhere. Uh, no, suck. You okay. Say okay. Uh, uh, you can say that people shy away from using eels on live beach. So I don't know why they do. Oh, they do. I don't. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, the structure that you fish is pretty much any structure. You know, I. You know, I heard people say that um, uh, rocks. They don't like throwing live eels around the rocks. Well, rocks are really one of the best places to throw live eels. Um, open beach. Throw them on the open beach. There's no reason not to throw them on the open beach. In the back bays, you know, you might want a different setup for like uh, different conditions, like maybe the back bays, you want a uh, maybe a 10 foot rod. This is an 11, or maybe you want even a 9 foot rod, maybe a little stiffer, maybe a little softer. I mean, that's something that you're going to have to work out when, when you get into live yielding, what rod specifically you want for your purpose. Um, but basically, anywhere, anywhere there's striped bass, you can throw an eel. Um, you know, in the open surf, or out of Montauk, like I said before, you want the bigger eels. In the back bay, I kind of like eels on the smaller side. I don't, I don't need to throw a 20 inch eel in the back bay. So, but anywhere is a good, good place to use eels. You know, um, you know we discussed this a lot on the surfratsball.com and uh, the, the Surfcasters Journal has extensive stuff on uh, eeling. Um, uh, on the surfratsball.com, you get my log, you, there's all kinds of structure, and we really get into stuff like that, really in-depth conversations. So uh, please consider becoming a member.